Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we are going to be looking at a brand new series entitled A Theory is Just a Theory. This is going to be about underdetermination in scientific theory. This series is going to come from some of the comments at the end of my last series, Debunking Atheist Dogma. If you're interested in that, you should check that series out. But before we get too much into this video, I have to clear up a misconception. This is not going to be the common fallacy of equivocation between the colloquial definition of a theory and a scientific one that is often put forward by opponents of the theory of evolution. They say, well, evolution is just a theory, so it's nothing important, so it's not something that's true, and so on and so forth. This is not going to be that argument. Rather, we're going to be talking about theories in the abstract. We're going to be talking generally about scientific theories. I don't think we're going to mention evolution after this point at all. This is an actual problem for science in general and the practice of science that we're talking about in this series. But don't take my word for it. Here's a quote from the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. The predicament Duhem here identifies is no rainy day puzzle for philosophers of science, but a methodological challenge that constantly arises in the course of scientific practice itself. That's from Kyle Stanford's paper, Under Determination of Scientific Theory, published in the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. If you want more in-depth explanations of the arguments I'm going to be going over here, or you want a bit of a preview of what we're going to be looking at, you should check this paper out. It's where I'm going to be drawing a lot of the information and arguments I'm offering here. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get to the meat of it. So, what is underdetermination? Well, maybe it's being beneath Arnold Schwarzenegger. You are under determination! Probably not. What about the CIA file codename of a dictator deciding if he should give it all up to make mosquito repellent? Catalog it under determination. Maybe not. Maybe it's a French film director of an all-male company calling for a scene to start. Un, deux, trois, men, action! Probably not. To understand what underdetermination is, let's look at some examples. So, imagine the following pieces of evidence, or math problem, whatever you'd like. Fatu went to the market. She spent $13 on artichokes and plantains. Artichokes are $5 and plantains are $3. How many of each did she buy? It should be clear that there's only one solution to this problem, namely that she bought two artichokes and one plantain. The information that we are given, the evidence we are provided with, determines a specific solution to the problem. However, imagine this scenario. Sochna went to the market. She spent $28 on artichokes and plantains. Artichokes are still $5 and plantains are $3. How many of each did she buy? Well, if you think about this problem for a second, you should soon find that the information we are given does not determine a single solution. It doesn't give us enough information to tell what the solution is to the problem. Either she could have bought five artichokes and one plantain, or she could have bought two artichokes and six plantains. The information we are given underdetermines what conclusion we can draw from the situation. That is simply what underdetermination is. When the information we are given does not determine what conclusions we can draw from a situation. Now, both of these were pretty simple examples. Let's take a look at something a little more complicated that will start applying a little bit more to our scientific theories. So, imagine that there's a correlation between playing video games and antisocial behavior. Question is, what conclusions can we draw from this information? Or, what is determined by this information? Well, either playing video games leads to antisocial behavior, or kids that are generally antisocial are more likely to play video games. Or, there's some other factor that influences both. For example, parental neglect. Once again, the information we are given underdetermines what conclusions we should draw from it. It's often said that correlation does not imply causation. We can say this another way by saying that a correlation underdetermines the conclusion of causation. 
Okay, so there's two different versions of underdetermination we're going to be looking at here. One is holistic underdetermination. I'll quote the SAP again. Holistic underdetermination arises whenever our inability to test hypotheses in isolation leaves us underdetermined in our response to a failed prediction or some other piece of disconfirming evidence. Or, in other words, when our predictions fail, we can't validly conclude that the hypotheses we've put forward are incorrect. We're going to look at this in light of the question of whether or not hypotheses are able to be falsified. We're also going to be looking at contrastive underdetermination. But contrastive underdetermination involves the quite different possibility that for any body of evidence confirming a theory, there might well be other theories that are also well confirmed by that same body of evidence. Once again, quoting the SCP. The problem here is that when predictions in fact succeed, we can't validly conclude that our theory is correct. This gives rise to the problem of nothing being verifiable, depending on your definition of verifiable. We'll talk about that in a later video. So that was a theory is just a theory, underdetermination in scientific theory. Next up we'll look at our theories falsifiable holistic underdetermination. Then we'll talk about the rationality of science and ask, is our practice of science a rational practice or an irrational practice with Larry Loudon and the SSK? Then we'll ask the question, are theories verifiable under a strict understanding of what verifiable means? And talk about contrastive underdetermination. And finally, we'll ask the question, are our theories correct? And talk about transient underdetermination, a type of contrastive underdetermination. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.